I just thought I'd give you a bit of a lead in to how um, myself and my brother got into creating content together um, and how we kind of got to uh, doing what we're doing at the moment. And it all started at a client lunch in 2009. So I was working in uh, advertising sales at the time, selling ads in bus shelters. And I'd taken out a client to celebrate the half a million dollars they spent on bus shelters with us. And we all started drinking beer and having tasty tapas um, when I started coughing blood. And uh, I had to remove myself from the table. And I had very distinctly had that feeling of like, oh, fuck, this isn't good. Because <laughs> the only time I've ever seen anyone cough blood is when they're uh, turning into a zombie or they've been shot in the chest by an arrow um, or they're Nicole Kidman in Moulin Rouge. And that's, that one doesn't end well. And it turns out that I was actually very much like Nicole Kidman in Moulin Rouge in that I had tuberculosis. Um, and it was of the multi-drug resistant variety. Um, that's a photo of me in hospital. And, um, so what ended up happening was that I got quarantined in a hospital room. Uh, and in the, at the time that it happened, it was actually kind of like a... We can't tell you how long you're going to be here because we don't know exactly how to treat the multi-drug resistant bugs that have created a, 50, a hole in your lung the size of a 50 cent piece. Um, but we do know that we should be able to get there at some point. So anyway, they, they just kind of left me in this uh, three by four metre room, quarantined, where I ended up spending six months. Um, and uh, that's how long it took for them to kind of clear the bugs. But while I was there, I was just like really, really bored. And um, I'd recently bought a MacBook just about a week or two before I got to hospital. And so once the medications they gave me started kicking in, which had all sorts of like gnarly uh, psychological side effects, um, including like paranoia and uh, like really intense paranoia. I thought the nurses were all trying to kill me and the, the doctors were all part of this conspiracy to try and make the like healthy white guy from Sydney die of a multi-drug resistant disease so that it benefited the many in Africa <laughs> who carry like I had these entire <laughs> it was it was heavy. And um but so basically I thought, you know, if I'm be, if I'm gonna be stuck in here in a hospital room, I may as well kind of learn how to use my MacBook and it had Garage Band and iMovie on it and I just started kind of tinkering around and um, I wrote a rap song um, on GarageBand and then shot a video for it on the built-in camera in the laptop. And um, I put it on the internet. Uh, essentially, a friend came to visit me and he said, oh, you know, um, what have you been doing in here? And I said, oh, I, I, I did this. And I showed him the clip. And he's like, that's pretty funny, man. You should send it to me. And so I tried to email it. And it was a 136 meg file. <laughs> and I, that's how little I used the internet. I didn't actually realize that you couldn't just email through Hotmail like a 136 meg file. And I said to him, I don't know what to do. I can't send it to you. And he said, I'll just upload it to YouTube and then send me a link. So that's what I did. I put it on YouTube, sent him a link. And then he shared it on his Facebook page. And then the next day it had 10,000 views. Uh, and then I had like breakfast television shows calling me going like, oh, you know, can we Skype in with you while you're in hospital and have a chat about this rap video? And then from that point, I just decided like, oh, you know what, if I'm stuck here, I'll just... Th this, this, this morning TV show I was on, when they interviewed me, they put a label on the bottom that said fully sick rapper underneath it. <laughs> and then I was like, cool, I'll just fucking call myself the fully sick rapper and I'll just keep making videos in here. What happened after that video was pretty extraordinary in that, like, I was... The hardest thing about this situation is that I was isolated in this room and anybody that I had contact with, I had contact with only their eyes because they had to walk in wearing these kind of masks that covered their face and gloves and, you know, um, plas plastic fucking hazmat suits or <laughs> whatever. Um, and so it was a very kind of like harrowing experience and I was very lonely and I was very kind of d d detached from the world. And when I started putting these videos on the internet, all of a sudden the room that I was stuck in got a whole lot bigger. And um, I started having people who were going through similar things to me in front, on the other sides of the world getting in contact. Uh, I had, there were these dudes who like printed out my face on cardboard and then dressed up as me to go to their high school prom and took photos of their prom going like, oh, this is you on your prom. And but, you know, just like people doing all these things for me so I could enjoy life outside of the room. And um, that was like, it was really cool because it just kind of, yeah, it opened up everything for me in there and it, 
I started to really like understand the spiritual power and the like cre the the potential for creativity to connect people. And I've really got a whole lot uh, out of that more than just kind of like making videos. Um, and so at first, what what happened was that we just started creating stuff. Or I started creating stuff in there for the sake of distraction. Um, and it just kind of kept me busy and gave me something to do. But then my brother had been through uh, film school and he'd just finished a degree at UTS and he'd made a couple of short films. And he was like realizing, I don't know if anyone's made any short films before, but he was realizing like how difficult that kind of festival system is to be able to actually get your stuff seen. Because you can go through all this work of writing, creating, producing, putting together, editing, post-producing a short film. And then, you know, you're really lucky if you get it into a festival. And then if you actually get it into a festival, you're really lucky if like 1,000, 2,000 people see it. Like really, really lucky. Uh, and then what, you know? But so my brother kind of, um, he said, man, you've got this YouTube channel where you put a couple of videos on and all these people are subscribing and you're getting all these people that are starting to follow what you're doing. Like, let's make more stuff. Let's start making stuff together. Uh, and so he started coming in to hang out with me in the hospital room. And, you know, the doctors only ever advised that someone comes in to spend 20 minutes in there and he would come in there for like 28 hours at a time and like seriously put his health in, in great risk um, to like write and shoot and create stuff together. And so he was essentially like, let's seize this opportunity, let's use this to make more stuff. And so we started creating peripheral content to the, to the, to the original videos. I should play a little bit of this one. He had this idea of like, imagine MTV Cribs came to meet the fully sick rapper and do like a Cribs thing on your crib. Like what would that be like? Sick in the sense of being sick, but I'm sick in the sense of being sick sick. I ain't sick in a way that a car might be sick, but I'm sick and I mean actually sick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and so we ended up making like a bunch of videos together in there in hospital as a way to try and like keep building the YouTube channel that we're working on. Um, and we just really enjoyed the process of working together. Be before I got sick, you know, if anyone's got brothers or sisters, you know, when you go through your teenage years, we're two years apart, and somewhere through our teenage years, we'd kind of um, become a little bit estranged just through the fact that we were just always fighting with each other over who had the bigger bedroom or like who got the bigger steak at dinner or um, you know him having to wear hand-me-down clothes all the time and just all those kind of like silly shit that makes you fight with a sibling and um, through this process of like me getting sick and him coming in to create stuff and us creating stuff together it really like brought us together again um, and that was like really a, one of the really awesome positive things out of the whole being sick thing. But um, so working together, we kind of came up with this idea for a show about uh, a guy who gets sick and gets quarantined in hospital and his kind of fast paced advertising life comes to a, gr a grinding halt uh, when he's stuck in hospital. And, um, and his brother, who's this kind of guy who's isolated in his own way because he's an addicted video gamer who lives out a second life through like a World of Warcraft type thing. Uh, and then, you know, the show being about those two brothers coming together and essentially the sick guy using his laptop as a portal into the internet to escape his hospital room. And so we came up with, we entered this film contest at the time called The 180 Project that was being run through MTV, where you had to create a trailer for a TV show idea. And so we did that, we worked on that, 
Uh, probably 90% of the work we did on that was done while I was still in hospital. And then when I got out of hospital, we kind of shot a few extra bits and pieces, put it together, pitched it as part of this 180 project, and we ended up winning the competition. And they gave us $180,000 to shoot a pilot. Um, and so, you know, we'd gone from just literally working in a hospital room, shooting our own stuff with our own cameras and taking turns who does the filming and getting friends to come in and help film and, um, to, you know, what, recording sound however we could and just kind of knocking about to suddenly having 180,000 bucks to spend on something, which um, felt huge. And we just really wanted to use that opportunity to, we, we ended up, they said, oh, you've got to make a, a, a thing that'll be a TV 60 minutes, so you know, 42 to 46 minutes is the end thing that you'll deliver. And we just wanted to use every minute of the 60 that we had. So we made this 60 minute thing and it was more like a kind of telemovie uh, where we could really stretch ourselves as far as how much we could learn about narrative storytelling, how much we could learn from the cast and crew around us. And I'll just show you the trailer for Sick because I think it's a kind of, it's an interesting thing when you look at those first shitty rap videos that I was making in hospital to kind of, uh, you know, 12 months later, the, um, the stuff we were able to produce collaborating with other people. A bacterial infection of the lungs, airborne transmitted, can seem highly contagious. Highly contagious. Three weeks. Isolation. We are talking about extremely powerful antibiotics here with some very serious side effects. I've got tiger blood. Great. Well, maybe you could help us out. Yeah. I'm sure you should be working. Sound worried, Dexter? Are you worried, mate? Well, you do have tuberculosis, and I'm coming for you. <laughs> it's been an age, hasn't it, Your brother? This is the most epic online role-playing experience since the time of the first song. Ones and zeros, brother. Ones and zeros. <laughs> 